even if I'm not that strong, I have friends that I want to be with. So I've got to be stronger than everyone or I'll lose them. So I've thought of a way to fight with my all so that I won't lose to anybody. You won't be able to keep up with me anymore. All of my techniques have evolved to the next level. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we are going to be delving into the very Luffy specific topic of gears. Gears are an evolving set of combative forms created by our series protagonist, Monkey D. Luffy, in order to deal with the ever escalating challenges of the Grand Line and the New World. These body enhancement modes are accessible only to Luffy as they were crafted specifically to take advantage of his devil fruit, the Gomu Gomu no Mi, a paramecia type fruit that grants its user a body that takes on the properties of rubber. And within the series, these gears currently take on three different forms, which are rather straightforwardly referred to as gear second, third, and fourth, each of which focuses on enhancing a particular aspect of Luffy's devil fruit in conjunction with the general idea of combat. So commencing with Gear 2nd, this form sees Luffy increasing the size of his blood vessels, and before we all say that's stupid, let's remember that he is a rubber man and he can do whatever the hell he pleases. But in any case, this allows his body to pump oxygen and other assorted nutrients at a significantly higher rate, resulting in greatly increased strength and speed, as well as becoming very visually shiny and steamy. And a good general comparison for the level of which these attributes are boosted would be to look at its first featured use in the series during the Enisobi arc. Prior to the activation of Gear 2nd, Luffy in base form was very much able to keep up with Bluno, but immediately after activating Gear 2nd, this fight became so one-sided that it puts a Mobius strip to shame, with Luffy capable of breaking through even Bluno's strongest of superhuman techniques. Now currently this whole Gear 2nd thing sounds pretty fantastic, yeah? A huge boost in speed and power. It's essentially like turning Super Saiyan, right? Well, not so much. The big issue with invoking Gear 2nd and Gears in general really, is that there are consequences for their use. In the short term, Gear 2nd expends an absurd amount of energy, causing Luffy to become tired and even more importantly, hungry at a much faster rate. And once these bodily nutrients are completely depleted, then Gear 2nd will automatically deactivate. However, it does get worse, much worse, as prolonged use can leave Luffy in a state of paralysis. And oh, there's also the whole thing of Luffy shortening his lifespan with every use of the form. You know, just minor issues like that. Although it should be stated that post time skip, Luffy seems to have found a way to reduce the cost of his lifespan, which may very well have to do with his mastery of the form in regards to now being able to use it in select portions of himself, rather than needing to activate Gear 2nd through his entire body. Quite notably, the majority of Luffy's attacks in Gear 2nd form carry the name Jet, many of which are just upgraded versions of his normal moves. For example, Gomu Gomu no Bazooka becomes Gomu Gomu no Jet Bazooka, and so on and so forth. The exception to this naming scheme comes when Luffy uses Haki in conjunction with Gear 2nd. To illustrate, the Red Hawk attack is essentially a jet bullet coated in armament Haki, which is also somehow able to ignite into flames. Exactly why the latter happens isn't what I would call clear at this point, and there are great amounts of speculation, but none of which I'll be going into here. What I will be getting into is Gear 3rd, and this represents a rapid departure from the ideas presented in second, choosing instead to focus purely on enhancing the strength of singular attacks. Gear third achieves this by seeing Luffy bite into his thumb joint and inflating his bones. Once again, remembering that he is rubber, so making a hole in your bones isn't too difficult a thing to achieve. The result, however, is a supersized limb capable of devastating power if it were to hit an opponent. And that last part is very important because gear third is not a form that Luffy can simply whip out on a whim. It takes a bit of time to prepare and all of his attacks using the form are quite obviously telegraphed to the opponent. Whether or not that opponent is strong or fast enough to actually do anything about it is another matter, but it does leave them with the potential to counter. Gear third also came with an incredibly massive side effect in the pre-time skip era of One Piece, as immediately following its use, Luffy would shrink into a chibi Luffy for roughly the same amount of time as he engaged in gear third, which significantly reduced the form's utility beyond a pure finishing move due to how vulnerable it left Luffy afterwards. However, just as with gear second, Luffy has greatly improved gear third post time skip and is now able to use it without fear of shrinkage. And furthermore, Luffy is also capable of using it in a more precise manner. For example, whereas previously he had to inflate his entire arm, Luffy is now able to condense the inflated area just to his fists. And of course, in the modern era, gear third attacks are more often than not also coated in armor mitake to greatly increase their damage output. And that brings us to the next incarnation, gear fourth. And when you first see it, Gear 4th looks like a bit of a Frankensteining of everything that previously made up Luffy's combat arsenal. Like you have the coloring and steam effect of Gear 2nd with the inflation of Gear 3rd and the Haki of, well, Haki. And that's more or less what it is, a creative fusion that takes all of these individual ideas and sculpts them into a fearsome fighting force. In order to achieve this form, Luffy first coats his armor in armor and Haki before biting into it, Gear 3rd style. However, instead of inflating his bones, Luffy instead goes on to inflate his muscle mass and distributes it amongst his body, depending on his particular needs at the time. For example, the most commonly seen use of 
gear fourth is the bound man form, whereby Luffy places great emphasis on inflating the upper half of his body. Although at least two other forms are available, including Snake Man, which focuses more on adapting gear fourth to be optimally used for speed, as well as Tank Man, which focuses on using gear fourth after eating one too many biscuits. Whatever the incarnation, gear fourth offers Luffy a physical upgrade in near every manner. He gains access to devastatingly powerful attacks such as the Kong Gun, as well as a funky utility attack called Python, whereby Luffy becomes able to redirect his punches mid attack rather than needing to retract his arm and try again. Now, as a result of Luffy's inflated rubber body being coated in Haki, he also becomes significantly more resistant to attacks, as they will just generally bounce off him. Although as a side effect to this, Luffy also becomes unable to properly stand up and is forced to constantly bounce his way to victory. The other incredibly detrimental feature of Gear Fourth is that there is a limit to how long it can be used for, and following that use, Luffy is left exhausted and in some cases completely unable to move. Plus, he loses the ability to use Haki for 10 minutes, which might not sound like a long time, but when there's a birdcage incoming or a man made of mochi gunning for your head, 10 minutes is an eternity, and were it not for sheer fate, Luffy would have been defeated by this side effect on several occasions. Some more fun facts about gears. In regards to the steam generated by gear second, this is explained by the idea that Luffy's metabolic rate is so high that his sweat is being vaporized, so as to make it appear that he's generating steam. Gear second also bears a striking similarity to the Kaioken technique from Dragon Ball, particularly in the animated medium, with both Luffy and Goku's skin turning pink for their own mechanical reasons. In regards to the gear fourth form of Tank Man, it is entirely possible that we have not seen its base form, as it was implied that this transformation was a situational adaptation called the Manpuku version, literally meaning full stomach version. As for the general aesthetic of gear fourth itself, in the SBS of volume 79, Oda revealed that the designs were based on the two guardians of Buddha known as Neo. And finally, a truly useless fact, in a curious case of numbering, the first debut of Gear Second occurred in chapter 387, while the debut of Gear Fourth would come 486 chapters later, giving it the exact opposite numbering, as its existence was made known to the world in chapter 783. But that pretty much does it for Gears. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.